Um, yeah, I never actually set out to study climate change. I just worked on rainforest animals. And a couple of years ago, we did some analyses just to see what the effects of a changing climate might be. And basically, the results were just so frightening that it completely changed the direction of my research to completely concentrating on climate change. I mean, I was working in this sort of like pristine rainforest area that's a world heritage area, fully protected, but then along comes something like climate change, which could completely you know, devastate the place. This rainforest really is probably an indicator on a global scale. It's, it's a biodiversity hotspot as well, so you've got lots of species, and a lot of those species are in the tops of the mountains. And so when climate warms up, they've just got nowhere to go. There's no rainforest to the north, the south, the west, the east. There's no more higher mountains for them to move up on. You know, it would only take a couple of degrees uh, increase to wipe out nearly uh, a third of the species that we find here in the wet tropics. So the idea was, with the climate change emphasis, was to do the sort of sampling I'd already been doing, because I already had this big backlog of information that was really useful, but to do it at all different altitudes in the region. Uh, the idea of that is that that's where you'll sort of see these changes, that as animals get pushed up the mountain, as it gets hotter, um, so the sort of things we're doing is to try to pick animal groups where we could sample them at these different altitudes and get a good idea of whether or not they start getting pushed up. So we do things like bird surveys in the mornings to get ideas of the different uh, abundance of birds. We do reptile surveys. We do insect sampling with another. So the idea was to try and get a sort of fairly diverse and different groups of species um, which might show different types of impacts. Part of this project is the mist netting, and what mist netting is, is there's 10 nets that are 30 feet long and 9 feet tall, and it has a really fine uh, net in it, and you, sometimes you can't even really see it. And then you just wait till birds fly in there, because they can't really see the nets, and if they do, it's much too late. So the birds get tangled within the nets, and you check them about every half an hour. And what they do with the birds is once they take them off of the nets, they process their information, which is they weigh them, they measure their wings, they take blood and DNA samples, which is just taking feathers, and they put a band onto their feet in case they're recaptured again, they can compare and contrast the information that they collect the second time or third time or however many times they catch it. Believe that climate change is happening and believe that it's probably going to have the biggest impact on everything we see and do than anything you can possibly imagine. Sometimes people need that harsh reality check to kind of open their eyes and let them see the true picture of the state of the world. You know, it's pretty disheartening to hear all these negative facts about how messed up the world is, and how bad we've let things get, but you know, when you come see people like this trying to make a difference, you know, it's inspiring. So when I go home, I'll probably be cutting back on, you know, little things like taking a less time in the showers, you know, just trying not to waste. I guess my opinion is that I don't think people will start doing what's necessary until it actually starts to really directly impact on them. And that's not that far off. <laughs>